everybody and welcome back to the Blossom Crochet channel. If this is your first time visiting then my name is Rebecca and make sure that you click that subscribe button and also the little bell icon so that you can keep up to date and get notified whenever I upload a new crochet tutorial. This crochet tutorial I will be showing you how to make this absolutely beautiful beautiful stitch so you can use it just to make smaller rectangles like the one I've got here and join them together or you could continue it to whatever size that you liked. Now I did upload this as a tutorial recently but I noticed that I'd made a mistake while I was filming and rather than just put a pinned comment or a note in the description that not everyone might notice or see I thought I'd just redo the tutorial just so that there is no confusion whatsoever. So I've done rounds of different colours but you can continue in a solid colour, it is completely up to you. You can use absolutely any yarn that you like and then just use whatever the recommended hook size is for your chosen yarn. So it's a really delicate, beautiful stitch. I really love how it is working up. So let's just jump in straight away with this cluster v-stitch. So that is what it is made up of, is little cluster v-stitches. So you'll start obviously with your slip knot on your hook and you're going to do a starting chain in a multiple of three. So any length, just so long as it's a multiple of three. I'm going to be doing 21. So yarn over, pull through. It's one, two and three. So if you just chain your multiple of three. So we're going to work back along this foundation now and we're going to be working into the third chain from the hook. So you never count the loop that's on your hook. So we've got one, two, and this is our third. And into this stitch, we're going to put a treble crochet. So please remember that I'm working in UK terms here. In US terms, these will be your double crochet. So yarn over, insert into that third chain, yarn over and pull up and you'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is going to count as our first half of our cluster V-stitch. Then go into chain one, and then we're going to do the other half of our cluster stitch into that very same chain. So we're going to put a two treble crochet cluster into this same chain. So to do that, you want to yarn over, insert back into that chain, yarn over and pull up. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops and stop. You'll then yarn over again, go back into that same chain, yarn over and pull up. Now you'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that is a cluster. So we're then going to skip two chains. So you're going to skip one and two, and into that third chain, you're going to put a cluster V-stitch. So this will be the first time that we do a proper cluster V-stitch because obviously that first one was a bit of a funny one. So into that third chain, you're going to do a two treble crochet cluster. So you're going to yarn over, insert into that third chain, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over again, go back into that same chain, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through the first two, and then yarn over, pull through all three. Chain one, and then another back into that same chain. So yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, back into that same chain, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. So that is our first proper cluster v-stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that again, so you'll skip two and then cluster v-stitch into the third. Okay, so if you just repeat that all the way along your chain and I will meet you in just a second. So as you get towards the end, you should have three stitches left. So you should be able to skip two and then work your final cluster V stitch in that very last chain. So 
So my fridge has just suddenly decided to go really noisy. I'm not sure quite why. Okay, so that is how you should look at this point. So now we want to start creating corners and also the short edge. So to create a corner, we want to do a chain three. So one, two, and three. You can chain two if you prefer. It's just the amount of stitches that need to be worked into a corner space. I've just found that chaining three just gives us that little bit more room. We then want to create the start of our short edge of our rectangle. So to do that, we're going to do another cluster V stitch into the same chain that we worked our final cluster stitches into. So into that very same chain, we're going to do another cluster V stitch. So this final chain will have quite a lot of stitches worked into it. Always remember to do your chain one of your V stitch. Okay, so that is the start of our short edge. You now want to create another corner by doing your chain three. And then once again, you're going to work into that very same chain that we've done all of these other stitches into and you're going to put another V stitch into that same space. So you'll have three sets of cluster V stitch worked into that very same chain. We're now going to work the other side of our long edge. So you're going to be working into the base of our cluster V stitches from the other side. So into every base of these stitches, you'll put a cluster stitch. So make sure you're working into the base of the V stitches, not into the space of the skipped stitches. Make sure you're going into the base of these stitches from the other side. And you just put one cluster stitch into the base of each from the other side. Okay, so I've worked those all the way along and I look like this at present. And then we've got this last set of cluster stitches. So into this stitch, we will put another cluster stitch. And once you've done that, we want to create our corner spaces. So you want to do your chain three and then back into that same space, we need to do our short edge. So we'll do our cluster V stitch. And then you want to create your final corner. So do your chain three and then you want to slip stitch to the top of that very first stitch of the round. So you've got your chain one stitch, so you don't want that one, you want the one just next to it. And you'll slip stitch to that to finish off this round. And that is how you should look at the end of round one. I'm actually going to be changing colours here, so I'm just going to fasten off. So I'll just snip off my colour and pull that out to tighten up and then I'm going to swap to my next colour. Now because I'm changing colours each round I'm going to be joining in the corner each time however if you were carrying on with a cake or a single colour all you would do after slip stitching there is slip stitch into this chain one space and complete your cluster V stitch so pretty much exactly what I'll be doing in the corner space except you'll be doing it in the next stitch along. So you would just slip stitch into that next chain one. So you can either join with a chain two and then a treble next to it, or you can do standing stitches, which is what I plan to do here. So I've got my yarn on my hook. With my slip stitch, I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go into my corner space, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two and stop, yarn over, back in, yarn over and pull up yarn over, pull through two, 
and then yarn over, pull through all three, and that just gives us a normal cluster stitch to start. But like I say, you can do a chain two and a treble, it's totally up to you. I've done my chain one, and then I'm going to finish off the other half of my cluster V stitch into my corner space. Like I say, if you would slip stitch to your chain one space, if you were carrying on with a single colour, you would just chain two, treble, chain one, and then complete the other half, and then we'd move on as normal. So then into each of your chain one spaces, you're going to do a cluster V stitch. So never work in the spaces between your Vs. Always make sure you're in the chain one space between your clusters. So you'll put one cluster V stitch into every chain one space all the way along. So I've just reached my corner chain three space and in your corner space you're going to do a cluster V stitch, chain three, cluster V stitch all into this same space. That's one and then I'll chain three and then another cluster stitch right into that same corner space. Okay, we're not going to work anything into the chain one space on our short edge on this first round. We will in future rounds, but on this first round we will do our corner spaces only. We will not be working into that chain one space at all. So you'll skip straight over that very first one. Like I say, we will work into these ones when we come round with the next round, but in this first round we do not work into that chain one space. You will do one corner, skip straight across, to your next corner space, that's really important. So straight to your next chain space, chain three space, you will do your next corner, so you will do your cluster V stitch, chain three to create your new corner space, and then back into that same chain three space, you will do your other V stitch. Okay, so that has worked us round the edge. We are nice and square. I hate saying the word square when we're making a rectangle, but hopefully you know what I mean. And then we're ready again just to work down our long edge, doing a cluster V stitch into every chain one space of the V stitches from the previous round. Okay, I've worked my long edge. I've now got to my next corner space, so I will complete my new corner. So I'll do my cluster V stitch. chain three to create my new corner space and then my other cluster V stitch back in that same space. And then just like on the other side we're going to completely ignore this short edge stitch, we're not going to work anything into this chain one space, we're going to go straight across to our other corner space. And we've already worked half of this corner space because we've already done one of our V stitches. So we're just going to jump straight across and do one V stitch into that space. And then you want to finish with your final chain three and then close to the top of that first stitch of the round. Now obviously if you carried on in a single colour then you will have started in this stitch just here so you will still need to do your chain three and then your final corner. So make sure if you've carried on in the one colour that you complete your final corner properly and then you'd slip stitch to join at the top of this first stitch here instead. I'm going to change colour again so I'm going to chain one 
So that is how you should be looking at this point. Now, as I say, again, if you're continuing with a single colour, slip stitch to your next chain one space and work up from there. I'm just going to do one more join and round with you now, just so that you know where to put your stitches on your short edge, because obviously we didn't do any on that first round. So I'm going to join in my corner again with my cluster stitch. So I'll show you that one more time. So slip knot on your hook, yarn over and hold, insert into your corner space, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over again, back into your space, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three, so you get a normal cluster stitch. Chain one, and then obviously back into that space, you will do the other half of your e-stitch. And then you're ready to work your long edge, so into every chain one space you will do your new cluster V stitch. So if you work your long edge and I will meet you at the corner in just a second. Okay so at your corner space you will do your cluster V stitch chain three and cluster V stitch back in that same space. Okay, so this time we are going to be working into our clusters from the previous round. So you'll have two sets to work into. So into the chain one space between your clusters you will do your new clusters. And then into your chain three space, you will complete your corner as normal with your cluster V stitch, chain three, cluster V stitch. And then once more, you'll work down your long edge again and complete your corner. And then you'll work into these two cluster stitches and finish off your corner space. So I'll meet you there in just a tick. So I've completed my corner, I'm going to work into my two cluster V stitches that I've got now from the previous round. So that is now we are working our short edge as normal, the same as we would our long edge now. It was just that first round that was different, well round two technically. Okay, so because I've joined in the corner, I'm ready to complete my final corner. I only need to do half of it because I already have one cluster stitch in there already. Remember to do your final chain three. And then, like I say, if you were doing your single colour, you'd be joining further around on your straight edge, so you'd need to complete your other half of your corner as well. But if, like me, you've been snipping off at the end of your rounds, then you'll join in your corner space. So you should hopefully be able to use that last round that we've just done, so my peachy orange round, you should be able to use that to complete your project to be the size that you want it to be. It should stay perfectly rectangular, it shouldn't twist or anything like that. It should stay just like this. So that is it for the tutorial. Remember so you can just rewind to the start of the last round if you want to, but you can just use that now to complete it to be whatever size you need it to be. But thank you as always for tuning in to this tutorial and I will see you for another one really soon. Thanks as always for watching and bye for now.